Hi, I'm Rachel, and I have just completed week two of the Milan Art Mastery Program. I was so excited to start week two because I had so much fun in week one, and I'm really eager to learn all the skills that they teach. I think it's so important to gather skills because then you can apply those to your own personal style and add your own touch to, to art. But if you don't even learn the basics and the foundations, you can't really create what you want to or what's in your mind. So I've been drawing for very, many, many years, but I had never worked with one of these scale tools. And I found that this one, this is one of the most amazing tools to be able to draw accurately. I've eyeballed things for so long and never realized how inaccurate my drawings are. And I'm so excited to be able to polish them as well as I've never drawn large pictures. I've been working digitally for the past six years. My illustrations that I work on are generally like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper is how I set up my drawings because I don't need them to be printed bigger. If I'm working on a children's book illustration, it's gonna be in a picture book, which is has paper standard sizes that aren't very large. So I do not know how to scale up and draw bigger and this tool solves that problem. However, I do think it would be interesting to get a larger scale tool that gives the capabilities of um, drawing out something that's really, really big. But for now, this works amazingly. So, what did we do in week two? Well, in week two, we started with a lesson on using our graphite pencils and fine charcoal. Fine charcoal are those little short sticks that come in a little uh, piece of black tissue paper. They do make your hands messy. And um, I found that it was really a fun medium to use. I had always stayed away from charcoal because it is messy. And I thought, well, what can you do with that? And then where are you going to keep the picture because it's going to rub off on everything? But I found that it's so much fun. So Dimitra had us do a scale, a value scale between one and nine, starting with the lights and going all the way to the darks. But then we learned that vine charcoal, it literally only goes up to a value of five whenever you rub it. You see, when you put your finger on it, it erases away. The darkest dark will not stay on your paper. It turns into dust and it rubs off on your finger or somewhere else. So I didn't know that and I think that's really an interesting little tidbit. So we also worked with the drawing pencils. I bought myself a drawing pencil set by Faber-Castell and it has H's. H's are very, very light and then it has B pencils starting with HB to 2B, 3B, 4B all the way up to 12B. And well, mine come in 9B up to 9B. I think some people's go all the way up to 12B, 12B being the darkest. So we created a value scale between one and nine again. And using um, cross hatching, um, you know, the pencil laid down almost at a flat angle. There's different ways of laying down your pencil and laying down the charcoal. So we experimented with that for a while. And then we went on to starting our radiant painting. Um, this was a good little project just to get familiar with our materials. And I found that I really don't like H pencils. I knew that because I had used them for architectural drawings when I went to interior design school at college, but um, it's useful if you're just going to lay down really light guidelines and stuff like that, but, but otherwise just stick with the B pencils. So the next step we did was begin our radiant underpainting. Radiant underpainting is using some pastel shades that have white added to them for the first coat. The resource that I picked was the Italian villa in the Italian countryside. It's a beautiful picture and I was really excited about painting this, but I didn't own any radiant paints. I know that Charvin makes some, Gamblin has a radiant set, but they're not available right now. But no worries, they say you can mix them by just adding white to the colors that you already have. So I mixed a palette of pastel colors. And I laid them out with the sky color, the mountains, the greenery, and so on and so forth. After that is dry, then you add a glaze on top. Looking at the reference, my darkest dark in there was a dark purple color. I don't tend to use purples in a lot of my pictures, but I decided to go for it because I think purple will be, uh, it will complement the green. It's not a complementary color, but I think it will work well, well with the dark greens. So I covered with a dark purple glaze and then I started subtracting out with our handy dandy subtraction tool, which I think is an amazing tool and scratching out like the areas um, between the mountain ranges in the sky and the tree edges and 
down here in the grass, in the fields. And after that, we let it dry and then we come back and we add in the opaques and the lights. When I was doing that, I basically added the sky in in a solid kind of way. I added in these, this area is supposed to be white on their source and this area is very light also. I didn't like it, it looked a little bit cartoony and I know I'm not experienced and so I got out my brush and I dipped it a little bit in the thinner and I started swiping to wipe away what I had done just to kind of like erase it and all these drips started happening and I love the drips. After that I really didn't want to paint back on top but I was like no no I need to do the assignment correctly so I went back and painted and I didn't like it a second time so I erased it again with some more thinner and these drips kept coming and I'm like I love the drips. So I just went with it and left a lot of the drips. I literally must have done this three, four times in certain areas, trying to get it to a place where I liked it. But I really like the drips because I've never done that before and I just love them. So this is the result and I'm super excited, even though it doesn't look exactly like my reference picture, I love how it turned out. So there you have it. And the other project we worked on was drawing some spheres, in this case, pears. You can pick pears, apples, some fruit and um, reflections here. And you're trying to get your lightest light and your darkest dark. And basically you lay down your pencil. This is not charcoal, this is graphite. And you use your eraser to erase out some highlights and you go as darkly as you possible. Now when I first did it, I did not put the table reflections on there. I just stopped there and the coach, one of the coaches mentioned that it would look better if I added the reflection and sure enough it really made the picture come alive a little bit more so I'm glad that um, they gave me that tip. So that's what we worked on during week two. I really enjoyed this. I feel for the first time I'm going to art school. It's something that I've always wanted to do and I know I've been drawing for a long time but there's so much out there to learn and painting to me is an entirely new field. I've done watercolors but I have never really worked with, I've never worked with oils but those few couple times that I dabbled, you know, two or three times and I have done a few acrylic things but by no means have I really painted. I literally just did a project here, a project there. So I don't know what I'm doing and I know these people at Milan Art do know what they're doing and they're really good teachers. So I'm so excited and if you're thinking about joining Milan Art, I highly suggest that you do so. If you're eager to work, the projects, there are a lot of projects and they keep you moving at a pretty fast pace, but you can go at your own pace. You don't have to feel the need to stick to the schedule that they lay out. Personally, I'm really excited that they pack a lot in because I feel like I'm getting my money's worth and I feel like I'm really learning something and I really um, ex am excited about having a curriculum to go through and feel like I'm gonna learn something when I get to the, by the time I get to the other side. So, um, if you have any questions about it, I'd love to answer them. You could just um, drop a comment down below and I can get back with you about something if you have a question about how the program works. And hit subscribe if you want to see more videos of this kind. I probably will be doing a video at least for a few weeks about how things are going as long as I have time to film a little bit here and there. And go make some art today.